Alright, so this is Polar Light's 1 to 1000 scale USS Reliant model kit. But as you can see from the title, I'm not going to be doing the USS Reliant. I'm going to be customising the ship up a little bit with the help of Polar Light's Aztec decal set, which is a separate pack you can purchase, which includes all of the decals for the Aztec patterns for both the um, Miranda and Constitution models you can buy from Polar Lights and also has an extensive range of letters and uh, numbers so you can name your own ship which at this point I haven't quite finalised which name I'm going to use so thanks to a bit of time travel you guys watching the video will already know but uh, yeah, it's uh, still up in the air for me at the moment so let's have a look inside the box All right, so you've got the uh, instruction sheet. And being the Reliant, this is going to be quite a simple build. So you just slap the two halves of the saucer section together. Attach the pylons and the cells, the roll bar, and you're pretty much done. And the first bag, so we've got the upper and lower halves of the saucer and main hull. And then the base for the stand, which is unusually white for this kit. Usually it's just moulded in black, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of painting there. And the metal rod. Clear parts for the impulse section. And the grills for the warp nacelles. And final bag for the roll bar, and the nacelles, and the pylons. And all the extra bits and pieces for the saucer. And finally the decal sheet for the USS Reliant. So I'm going to be using some of these, but obviously not the Resist Reliant Registry. And it does include battle damage for the scenes from the Wrath of Khan, which again I won't be using for this particular model. But they'll be nice to keep around, just in case I'll need them in the future. Alright, so let's have a quick look at the decal pack. Alright, so starting off we've got quite a nice hefty instruction sheet. So this covers both the Enterprise and Reliant. Some really nice large diagrams here. That's for the Reliant obviously. And yeah, there will be a little bit of slicing just to make these large decals fit around some tight corners. And edges, that sort of thing. So sheet number one, I've got all of the large numbers there and small letters. I think there's like, um, yeah, so quite a large number of um, multiple sets, so you can have a name with uh, multiple of the same letter at least. I think you'll probably have one, two, three. Yeah, so if the name has up to three of the same letter, they've got a allowance for that, but probably if you wanted to do the USS Mississippi, you might struggle a bit with so many S's. And so, starting off with the Aztec pattern decals. There. Yeah. Can't quite tell at this point what ship that one was for, but I think these ones are for the Reliant. Here with the, the roll bar decals there and then the red striping for that one. And usually this is on a blue backing paper, usually it's white. So you can see how transparent these decals are. And then a, a sheet of lots of saucer Aztec wedges. There. And it's just finishing off with more saucer wedges and a few more letters and numbers. Alright, so let's get started. So, should you wash parts before painting? Which is a question I see asked quite a lot, especially in comments and around in other videos. And for me personally, it really depends on a case by case basis. For a kit like this, which I've pulled straight out of the plastic bag, First thing I usually do is just run my fingers over the large flat areas 
just to get a feel of how sort of oily the kit feels because as these kits are pushed out of the, the metal moulds there is a little bit of release agent still left on the, the parts to help remove the plastic from the metal and sometimes that can be quite thick and very noticeable whereas sometimes you can't feel it at all if you just run your fingers over it this one in particular there is just a very very slight oiliness feel to it not huge you could probably get away with not washing it but I might wash it just in case because you might even get um, a little bit more build up in all of these recessed areas which you can't quite feel so if you want a super perfect flawless paint job or at least if you want to guarantee that then um, it probably would help to wash these parts first and for that procedure I just use some lukewarm water with just a little bit of dish detergent washing up detergent in there just to release the oil from the plastic and just give it a uh, rinse with cold water and it's usually good to go and yeah if I pull a model out and I'm not too concerned about the, uh, the base paint layer especially if I'm priming it or I'm going to be doing a lot of work and the model feels okay then I usually don't bother washing to be honest I probably don't wash most of the models I make simply because they feel feel okay or I just feel like I'm probably going to get away with it anyway uh, washing can be just a little bit of an extra step that is uh, kind of gets in the way of getting into the flow of things so for this particular case I'm probably going to give the saucer sections a quick wash and I'll probably just leave the rest of it these parts don't feel that oily at all to be honest all right so this is one of those lovely polar lights models that you can bang together without worrying about inserting any clear parts or painting in sections because all of the clear parts can be attached after the kit's been put together instead of going you know from the inside out which is good so what I'm going to do is just put everything together put the saucer sections together assemble the pylons and then the cells and then I think I'm just going to paint it all in one go actually which will make things uh, a lot easier all right so for my first major customization I want to make this particular Miranda class the same type as the USS Lantry from Star Trek The Next Generation as seen here in which they simply removed the roll bar and the top of the pylons with the phaser cannons um, I don't know why I've just always preferred the look, this look of this particular Miranda class um, the roll bar has always kind of looked a little bit weird to me um, I don't know why that may be controversial take but yeah I think the Miranda class looks much better without it and it may look like a much less capable ship without a huge weapons pod along the top but I don't know there's just something about the nice simple shape of the the saucer and the main drive section at the back and then just the the two nacelles popping up from underneath and actually it uh, kind of reminds me of the USS Cerritos from Lower Decks which is kind of a more modern take on it so yeah, so to achieve that look for this kit, what I'm going to have to do is, on this pylon, just clip off the top part of this structure here, which where the phaser cannons sit. Luckily on the other side, it's already ends where it should. So for this top part, I'm just going to need to carefully cut it off, hopefully just in one go, with the clippers. Just like that, and that part's now gone forever. So now when I attach these two parts, I may need to do a little bit of sanding back. Yeah, so maybe even a little bit of filler, but it shouldn't be too much of a job. So once that attaches to the hull, it should just line up nicely with the top of the saucer section. All right, so on to the next part.
So you may have noticed I've been using two different Tamiya cements for this build. And basically the simple rules for each one is the extra thin, as the name suggests, is very thin. And I use that for small delicate parts where I place the part first. So for example, slotting in the pylon to the nacelle. There, which is a nice tight fit. It's mostly fixed, but just to secure it, I'll use the extra thin and apply it around the, the join. And the capillary action will suck the glue into all of the gaps and create a nice bond there. What this glue, the extra thin glue, is not good for is, for example, like placing a blob first and then finding your part, placing it onto the uh, glued section. But as you can see, it's mostly just evaporated already and it will not make a nice strong bond. And so for those jobs, I just resort back to the standard Tamiya cement, which is a lot thicker. So for example, gluing the two halves of the nacelle together which needs a much more stronger bond and this glue will just sit there in blobs for quite a while which gives you time to get the next part and stick them together. So those are the basic reasons why I use two different glues. I could just use the extra thin for everything which I kind of did for a little while but you kind of use a lot more than you need especially when gluing these large parts and you kind of just end up wasting it. The extra thin is best reserved for when you need to be really careful and just gluing very small tiny parts without needing much of a structural bond. All right. Alright, so there was a little bit of cleaning up to do, especially around the saucer rim. There was just a very tiny lip at the top that I just uh, sanded back so it's flush with the rest of the edge of the saucer. And just the seams down the, uh, the nacelles, just top and bottom, just sanded those back a little bit to make them a bit less obvious. Alright, so um, there's still a few little gaps here and there to fill. But first I'm going to attach the pylons just so we can see exactly what we'll need filling. And these are all just clip-on, which can be a little bit tricky. Alright, I think that's in. There's no big snap, but so firmly pressed in there. Might, I'm still going to end up gluing it in, but yeah. I'm not always a huge fan of these snap together kits. Bandai do it well, but other companies, especially Polar Lights, I mean, it's cool that they make kits that you don't need to glue, but sometimes these huge, big, clunky tabs just kind of get in the way sometimes. I suppose I could clip them back and just glue it, but see how this goes. Alright, so 
So those are in. Now I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue to secure it in. And I think we can move on to filling and then painting. So by far the worst gap is just this, where the pylon meets the hull. You can sort of, sort of see there's a gap going straight through. So to fill that in, I'm going to use a bit of Vallejo plastic putty, which doesn't require any sanding. What I'm going to do is just apply it and then wipe away the excess with a cotton swab. Just like that and then let that set and it's a really quick and easy way to fill in gaps without having to worry about sanding or filing or anything. Sometimes it takes multiple applications, but you get there eventually. And now for the primer, I'm going to use Vallejo Surface Primer Black. And now for the base coat, I'm going to use Vallejo Model Air White Grey. Now with the white grey down, I'm going to do a fine misting of basic white just to bring out some highlights and to give a bit more definition between the panels. And with the white down, it's given a really nice mottled effect on the white grey. Just to give a bit of variation to the base coat. And I'm pretty happy with how that's come out. So what I'm going to do now is mask off various panels, like these detailed sections at the top, and some panels underneath. And for that I'm going to use a Vallejo Model Air Light Blue. 71257. It says it's light blue, but it's more of a, a very greyish blue.
And now with the base colours painted, I'm going to seal everything in with a coat of Tamiya TS13 Clear from a can. And that'll um, protect all of the paint and get it ready for detail painting and decals. Okay, so all of the Aztec decals have gone down, and now I'm just using a bit of Microsoft just to uh, get rid of a few last wrinkles and creases, especially around curved surfaces and raised bits, and a few bubbles here and there. But overall, these decals uh, worked really well. They held together really nice. They took quite a while to get loose on the backing paper, they're a lot longer than, uh, than I'm used to, but um, once they were ready to come off, they um, didn't break up or anything. They're pretty sturdy, and they perform brilliantly with the microsole. They really just self-wrap around parts. You really don't have to do a lot of work to clean up any overhang or anything. So pretty pleased overall with that set. And uh, so I think now I'm going to move on to... The uh, kit decals, so a lot of the markings, the striping, and the coloured blocks, and leaving off the names of course. And then once all of those are down, we'll do a few more rounds of Microsoft, and then I'll move on to the custom name nameplate. So for decals such as these where it's got United Federation of Planets, but also the Reliance Registry. I'm going to cut out just the number part and then replace it with my custom number. And then that way I can keep the rest of the decal. So I'll cut out the number first and then put it onto the back of these nacelles and then replace the uh, number with my custom decal set. But unfortunately that won't work for cases such as the Starfleet pennant that goes on the pylons because the decal set just doesn't have replacement letters that small. As you can see there, Starship USS Reliant. And um, this is so small and fiddly, even if I did have letters that small, I'd probably think twice about building up a name using letters that tiny. It'll just be so fiddly. So for this case, what I'm going to do is just cut out the wording and then just leave the, the Starfleet symbol. And that will just have to do for that bit. But the rest of the names, like obviously the Saucer Registry and some of the other names that are dotted around, I'll be able to replace those with the decal set letters. And actually the rest of these are for the roll bar, so I won't need to worry about those. And yeah, so um, we'll see how that goes. So here is a quick demonstration of why you absolutely need a decal setting solution, such as Microsoft, for a job like this. So for example, I've got um, these yellow blocks with the red striping around the outside for the phaser banks. And those are to be placed on top of the phasers. But as you can see, the mould for the phaser bumps is quite pronounced. 
And if you were just to place the decal over those little bumps, roughly in the right place. You'll see that there's kind of no chance really. I mean, once this decal dries, it'll just be a flaky piece of decal film sitting loose on top of these two phases. So in this particular instance, what you need to do is just line it up as perfectly as you can, just to cover it evenly on all sides. Probably needs to go back a bit. And you're just going to have to let it sit loose on top. It helps to keep it quite wet to make it stick to the model. Same for this one. Alright, so... They're kind of in position, but as you can see, especially on this one, just how far it has to go to reach the surface of the model. So with those roughly in place, I'm going to very lightly apply some Microsol. And I've got a de small dedicated brush for the application. And I just want to put the Microsol liquid on the decal, but to not try and move it. And then basically you just have to wait. And um, I'll be back once the Microsoft has started to take action. But you just kind of have to trust that it's going to work. Because it might not seem like it for a little bit. And you might start to panic. But it'll all come right in the end. The trick is you just got to make sure it's roughly in the right position because it's, if it starts to set and starts to melt due to the solution then and it's in the wrong place then it's kind of too late to fix it. So I think that's looking pretty good as far as placement goes. Alright so now I just need to wait and I'll time it to see how long it takes for the next application. Alright so it's now 10 minutes later and you can see this one here is starting to conform a little bit, settling down. This one here, not so much. That one is just a little bit like the other one, so it's time for just another application. This is going to take quite a few rounds of Microsoft. But as long as you do it consistently and carefully, it should... Um, start to fit nice and snug. Alright, so that's round number two. So now let's see how long it takes for the next one. Alright, so 20 minutes after the second application and I can't really see much progress since the last time. And this is the kind of thing I find with Microsoft on some particular decals. Like you'll put on several rounds and wait a little bit and you'll just see that it's not really doing anything and then you kind of freak out or give up or think that it's not really working but what I find is that there's like a weird curve to it. It'll initially be really stubborn but after a few rounds it'll suddenly start to shrink and conform. So even if it doesn't look like it's really doing anything keep going and eventually you'll find that it does work. So that's the third application this one here might just press it down a little bit. So it's not floating in the air at least. Alright, so now they're all kind of hugging on each side to the model. Now I just need all of the edges to sink in. So 30 minutes after the first application and slowly getting there. And 30 minutes later and I can start to see that it is having an effect. So just got to keep going. So it's been an hour since I 
made the first application. And the placement on each of these looks pretty good. So now I just got to keep applying Microsoft until I'm happy it's done. So that's number four. And now it's been an hour since the last application. So two hours in total it's been. And as you can see, we're starting to conform quite nicely. There is a little bit of distortion going around the red outline. So the decal is having to distort itself to wrap around such a big pronounced detail. And that's kind of the price you pay for settling in some of these decals on a model such as this. Um, you might be better off just painting these, but for some reason on this kit, the um, the yellow box extends beyond where the phases actually stick out of the hull, so they probably would be a little bit smaller, and the red outline would be quite difficult to paint. So I'm just happy using the decals, and even if the shape is slightly distorted, I think it still looks okay overall. So what's that? That's application number five, after two hours. So a few more to go yet. All right, so I went and had dinner, and it's now about three hours since I put on the last application. And as you can see, it's looking much better. So really starting to fit to those phaser bumps. But what I'm going to do is now is just make a tiny cut between each of the squares just to really help the decal finally get in there get rid of that crease all right now for another application i think i'm probably only going to need one or two more before it's finally settled so patience is uh, definitely the key when it comes to decals like this. And so I left that overnight and in the morning this is what they look like. So finally finished. I'm pretty happy with those. There is a slight separation of the decal right in the middle where it's showing a bit of the base coat. Maybe just a little touch up dab of yellow in there and a bit of paint will cover that up. But overall pretty happy with how those came out. And these are the ones on the top. There, so that's all of the main decals done. So now it's time to move on to the name and registration. And as was obvious in the video thumbnail and title, this will be the USS Sagan, named after the late, great Carl Sagan, of course. One of my earliest and long-time inspirations when it comes to all things science and astronomy. So I thought I would uh, do him a little tribute and naming a ship after him. And the registry will be his birth date of 11th of November 1934. So I thought that would be quite a fitting number to use. And so I've cut out all of the numbers I need. And now I just need to figure out what the exact placement and spacing will be. So I think what I'm going to do is just soak them all up and then place them all at once. So then I've got room to move them all around and adjust them as needed. And um, yeah, I'll start with the numbers since they're going to be the biggest and easiest ones to place, I think. All right, so let's see how that goes.
All right, so that's the name gone down, and I'm pretty happy with how that's placed. Although making micro adjustments on these letters, I just can't seem to get it 100% right in my head. I think it looks okay, but I don't. Every time I move a letter, it just never looks right. So I think I'm just going to leave it before I make it any worse. And unfortunately, the decal sets didn't come with the um, dots for the USS part, so I'm just going to have to loot those from this kit, just cut out each of these full stops and um, stick them on. But yeah, it's a shame the um, kits didn't have any pre-made USS plates either, it just, I just had to take those from the letter, the banks of letters, so yeah, there's a few little things missing from that decal set, but we'll make it work. All right, so I finished laying down all of the registration and a couple of places where the name goes. So there's the top and bottom registry there and the Sagan name along the back there. And also the numbers at the end of the nacelles. This was super, super tricky. Just trying to line up all of these numbers and you make just dozens of micro adjustments and you move one and another one moves and Probably wasn't a great idea putting them all on at once, but I just wanted to do that to get the spacing right. Instead of laying one and then letting it set and then laying another one, etc. So I think that's an okay job. They're mostly lined up. And there's a couple of spots where there's registry and nameplates missing, but that's just because the decal set doesn't have letters or numbers small enough to fit in those places, unfortunately. So, for example, this one here that goes behind the bridge, and there's a, there was another nameplate somewhere that sits behind the uh, impulse deck, but yeah, I just don't have replacements for those. So now I'm going to move on to applying the red striping that goes around the saucer. And now with all of the decals placed, it's time to start some final touches such as detail painting and attaching all of the remaining parts. Now for all of the bluish highlights around the ship, I'm going to use Vallejo Model Air Greyish Blue, A28M. Alright, so with all of the detail painting finished, I want to finish it off with a flat coat. But before I do that, I'm going to seal it all in with another coat of Tamiya's TS13 Clear gloss over the decals. And the reason for that is the uh, flat coat I use, this uh, TS80 from Tamiya, 
specifically says do not spray on decals and stickers. And I have um, experimented on this before and if you spray this flat clear straight onto large decals it can cause them to ripple and bubble up a little bit so it does have some sort of reaction. So before spraying that on I always make sure I protect everything with a just another thin coat of the clear gloss and that will just seal everything in and form a nice protective layer for the flat coat that goes over the top just to dull the shine down a little bit. And also I will just spray the base here just with a bit of Tamiya matte black from a spray can just to keep it nice and simple and then I think we'll be done. Yeah, so there it is on its painted base and with a nice coat of Tamiya Flat Clear, which came out really well this time around. Usually I have to do quite a few coats and there's usually a little bit of a sheen left, but this one only took a couple of coats and it's a really nice solid flat coating. So pretty happy with that and overall I'm yeah, I'm pretty happy with how the kit came out. Um, I still really like this version of the Miranda, this nice sleek flat top with just the engines. It's a little bit less capable without photon torpedo launchers and the uh, mega phasers, but um, yeah, being the Sagan, I think it's more likely going to be sort of a light explorer or scientific ship that just goes around conducting experiments or looking at stellar phenomena. So having a look around close up, I'm really happy with how the Aztec decals performed, especially with the microsol. There was um, not many bubbles trapped or silvering happening. It's a pretty even, consistent coverage. And I didn't really have much trouble laying them on. All of the pieces fit really well. So it was a pretty good set to get for the extra panelling detail. And the back is fairly simple. I didn't do much detail painting on the back, just left it with the impulse engines and the shuttle bays. Yeah, I didn't really want to get too heavily um, drawn in with this kit. It was just intended to be a nice, quick and easy job. Put the decals down, do a bit of detail painting, and uh, just knock it out of the backlog. It's been sitting there for a while. And, you know, there's a lot of reliance out there, so I was kind of tempted to do something a little bit different for the channel. And we'll just have a quick look at the underside. It would be really cool to get another one of these kits and get some uh, conversion pieces for the um, the Saratoga or the Bozeman. Yet more different Miranda variants. It would be kind of cool to have Cisco's old ship. Yeah, so, yeah, bottom's pretty straightforward, just the few decals there. Really not much going on. Nice bit of detail at the back. Lower part of the impulse dome there. And yeah, so pretty simple ship. Pretty simple kit. And uh, a lot of fun to put together. And so here it is next to my previous Enterprise build. Same scale of course. And as you can see, there's a slight colour difference between the Aztecs, between the Enterprise and the, the Sagan here. The Aztecs for the Enterprise came with the kit. So they're slightly different printing and slightly different colours. Uh, I think the Enterprise decals for the Aztec set that are used on the Sagan are the same colours. So they'll be slightly more bluish than uh, what you see here. But that's for another project. I am definitely going to build another constitution, whether it's the Enterprise A or another constitution. Um, I have yet to make my mind up, but that's another one for the in the backlog. And uh, yeah, the decals on the Sagan performed much, much better than the decals on the Enterprise. It's kind of hard to see here, but there was a lot of, oh, you can see here, there's a lot of silvering happened on these ones. It was very, very hard to get. All of the air bubbles and other bits of um, blemishes out of those decals. And there's quite a lot of silvering that occurred. But of these Aztecs, there was uh, hardly any problems whatsoever. 
there's still quite a lot of decals that kind of float over the um, panel lines, but that's kind of hard to to eliminate. Even even when you score it with a knife and then put more microsole, it just kind of tends to blend back together and just creates a bit of a gap over the over the recess. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this little build video. And as always, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll uh, do my best to answer them. And I hope to see you in the next video. So until then, if you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe.